Heck, got him. I got him. Right. Good job, John. Look at that musky. Oh, look at that bass. Look at that. Oh, my God. Oh. Look at that army tank, folks. Look at that walleye. Look at the size of that fish, my gosh. Welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Today's show is brought to you by Mercury Marine, number one on the water, by Bass Pro Shops, by Frable, innovating the outdoors, by Tracker Boats, by Mills Fleet Farm, your fishing gear headquarters, by Yamaha, ATVs and snowmobiles, by Schneider National, by Line and Kugels, by Menards, by Johnsonville Brats, and by Lindy Little Joe, makers of legendary fishing tackle. Hey, welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. I'll tell you what, folks, it's absolutely a beautiful day right smack dab in the middle of January. And we're doing something a little bit unusual today. We're up on beautiful Chiquamagon Bay in Ashland, Wisconsin, with Jim Hudson, who ice guides up here. And Jim is also a policeman up in this area, right? Yes, I am, John. Well, we're going to be doing something unusual today. 15 years I've been doing this show. 40 years I've been ice fishing. I've never fished for smallmouth bass. And that's what we're going to do? We're going to fish smallmouth bass through the ice today. Uh, can you give us a little bit of an explanation on that? Because um, most guys don't think bass bite through the ice. Well, they don't. But in an area where you have so many fish and they, in a wintering area where we're fishing today, the chances of you connecting with these fish are so much greater. And uh, I, I believe that we'll put a six pounder through the ice today. <laughs> and all on jig sticks too. All on jigs. You guaranteed me one smallmouth today? One smallmouth or ten. All right, buddy. Sounds good. <laughs> Folks, we'll show you what we're using and how we're using it. All of that coming up right after this. Hey, welcome back, folks. As I mentioned at the top of the program, we're up on Chiguamagon Bay in Ashland, Wisconsin, doing my first ever smallmouth bass uh, show through the ice with uh, guy Jim Hudson. And Jim, let's take a look at what we're using here. These Lindy Gensworms are good, huh? Yep, very good. It's my main main go-to jig for the bass through the ice, and uh, the extra large hook is really needed. The the wide gap that they have right the on the on the jig, so you can get a good solid hook set in these fish because the roof of their mouth is so hard and plus they're so big and they'll fight so hard that you need a good hook set right away. Okay, and you drill a bunch of holes and we hop around and yep. use our locators and hope for a bite, right? Yep, Let's go it. fishing. All right. Hey, fish on, fish on. All right, we've been out here jigging for about 20 minutes. I'll tell you, we got some slippery ice out here, Jim. We got your buddy Dave with yep. us, huh? Dave Wagner. Hey, look at the size of this smallmouth. Look, look at, at the size of that bass. Holy cow, is that a gorgeous fish. And he's using a little spoon here, huh? Yeah, spoons. Uh, you can tell the color, like we were talking about the Gensworm, green. Green. These fish just love green. Look at the size of that bass, though, folks. That is an absolute trophy. Now, that's a what, about 16, 17 incher? I would say 16, but look at the girth on them. Show them the girth, Dave. Yeah, if you can turn that fish so the folks at home can see this, this sardom here. Folks, you take a look at that, and, and a lot of these fish are full of eggs, but we kind of talked about it at the top of the program, Jim. The reason the smallmouth fishing is so good up here on Chiguamagon is because of your size limit yep. restrictions. Yep, 22 inch size limit. I mean, uh, you know, even these 16, 17 inch fish are pushing four pounds. Beautiful. That is, we'll catch you another day. But I'll tell you what, that is with the one fish over 22 inch size limit up here, you have developed a tremendous trophy yep. fishery. Yeah, it's. Uh, you know, one of the top places in the world to go to for bass fishing. Uh, I, I would say it's better than Lake Erie. It's better than Door County. Wow. I mean, you know, in the spring, you're talking 50 fish well, I like this ice fishing deal. What happened? How'd he hit that thing? Well, I dropped it down, and we were watching on the graph, and uh, he just hammered it. Good and job, he, guys. Oh, hammered it, huh? Oh, yeah. About six inches off bottom, and he just... Wow, just good nailed. job. Good start, good job, guys. Dave. Hey, I'll tell you what, folks, that was the last smallmouth bass we caught yesterday because we actually had an emergency on the ice. We had glare ice yesterday, Jim, and, and I didn't have creepers on, and maybe you can tell the folks what happened. Okay, well, uh, you took a pretty pretty good tumble walking from another hole uh, to fish another one, and, uh, you know, you fell right onto your shoulder. You got knocked out for about a minute. Was I really knocked out? You were knocked out clean. Well, I appreciate having you guys along, a police officer and a paramedic, because what you did was you rushed me to which hospital? Uh, Memorial Medical Center here in Ashland. Well, let's go and show the folks what happened there, all right? Okay. I'll tell you what, folks, taking a little break in the fishing action, I took a nasty fall out there and they had to rush me to the hospital. What hospital are we at here? Memorial Medical Center. Memorial Medical Center. And your name again is? Sue. Sue. And I just had x-rays done. And I'll tell you what, wearing creepers on the ice is what you should do. I was just wearing flat boots, took a nasty fall. The x-rays are done. What's wrong with me? You were fractured left clavicle and you broke it about right there. 
Okay. On the, on, towards the distal end of your clavicle. And you, so you just wrap it up in a sling and it well, heals on its own? Your figure eight in a sling, just because you have that dimpling there, it'll help you a little bit be more comfortable. I'm glad you're with a police officer and a paramedic and we got you. Yeah, the good connections place. there. You're yeah. right, buddy. I'll tell you what, though. A broken clavicle is a little painful, but I will be out there tomorrow with you, buddy. All right? Okay. We'll get the smallies tomorrow, yep. right? We will. Fish on! Fish, fish on! on. The glass, hey, I'll tell you what, Jim, it's tough for me to get around here, buddy, and I don't want to slip again, man. Yep. I'll tell Let's you what, we, we just missed one before, too, didn't we, buddy? Yep. Wow, this is cool. Nice fish. Oh, Look at the size pick. of that. All right. Hey, I'll All tell right. you what, folks. Right. Smallmouth bass through the ice, and that's one of the smaller ones you're going to catch? Yep, that's that's about the smallest one you'll catch today. Boy, I'll tell you what, folks. folks. Smallmouth bass through the ice, that's a cool deal. And that's on a little spoon, huh? Yep. Green cast master, like we, we were talking about yesterday, John. It's The green is a color to catch these fish. For some reason, it just turns them on. Oh, Tex, my buddy Tex has got one on here. Hey, 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 Tex really said small fish before. No, the drag is a little too loose. Look at these rods, folks. I'll tell you what, this is cool there, G. Oh my gosh, this is a small bass. Oh no. Oh, that's a shame. Well, you know what, that's the deal when they get near the top there, Jim. Yeah. What are you gonna do, man? Well, you gotta you gotta get close to the hole so you can watch your line, and because they'll make another run right to the bottom, and you gotta try to get there. Oh, the... that's a shit! That was a big fish, Tex. Come on down here, Tex. Well, that I can't come up to you. You gotta come down here, buddy. How the, don't lean oh, on my shoulder. Oh, there you go. The, come on down here, though, buddy. How that that thing hit that pretty hard? No, real soft. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing to it, man. What? He's that small fish, and I come over here, folks, and his rod is bent halfway down to the hole. But when they get up near the top like that, that's when you're going to lose them, huh? Yep. If you lose them. Yeah, because right when you're starting to guide the head through the hole, they'll usually try to get right underneath yeah. the ice. So, I mean, it, it happens, but uh, hopefully we'll get a few more. Boy, I wish I could <laughs> jig, buddy. I got it. The old glass has got a jig. Oh, there we go. Donkey's got the real, real hot lure. Oh, my gosh. Look at that thing fight. Nice, oh, nice fish. fish. Very key on this type of fishing is to have your drag set right, right, yep. Jim? And have a good, have a good rod with a good, good. Oh, there we go, another go small pull, mouth pull. bass. Yeah, hey, I'll tell you, that's right. unfortunately yeah. that's considerably smaller than the yep. one Tex just lost, isn't yep. it? And the the other one that the that Tilky lost. lost so, too. well, let's talk about this a little bit, buddy. You know, yesterday, folks, when we showed you the baits we were using, we were showing plastic and jigs. Mm -hmm. But what we got going right now is a, is a spoon, spoon deal. Yep. And, and, and you know that changes every day out yep. here, doesn't it? Yep, and, but the one thing that doesn't change is the color. Right. And that's green. Hey Jim, I'll tell you one important thing with ice fishing, especially for these smallmouth, is having an electronic locator out here. And maybe you can explain to the fish right now, you actually got a fish coming up on yep. your bait, right? Now point there's, to that. There's two fish coming right now. Okay. And uh, without electronics, you know, a flasher, uh, dur during the winter months, you're not going to be able to see these smallmouth just because they 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 roam the bottom so much right and uh it's just oh look at that he's right on it he's right yeah. on it is he so then you in that way you can just slowly rise the bait and hope the fish follows yep. it and then hits it right yep you're making the old glass walk too much today, there oh, jeff look at that rock. boy look at that taking out drag and you know one thing i noticed that we don't set tip-ups it's almost nope. all a jig bite yep. huh uh you can set tip-ups for them but the swallowed hook deal is a big thing with these Yeah, fish. folks, we are do really doing the catch and release. Look at that thing fight. Look at this. It's unbelievable. I mean, I can't imagine catching a five, six pounder, and that could happen today, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. This may be one. Well, oh, oh, look, oh, look yeah, at that. Look at that pig. This is a big fish, folks. This is a big fish. Can you get them? Make sure we get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I glad Jeff came along? <laughs> oh, 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 Jeff oh. is, uh, boy, I'll tell you, look at, look that. at that. Is that not wow. a gorgeous fish? And your fish are very blonde in color up here. And they lose their color in the winter, just like almost everywhere. They'll you, lose color. You know, you go into any circle of fishermen, Jim, and they'll all say this. You can't catch smallmouth bass through the ice. They're inactive, but yep. that is not the case. They're less active than they are in the summer, though, oh, right? Yeah. Yep, and they don't, I mean, Tilki, you know that fish fought, okay? It fought really hard. But in the summertime, they fight twice as hard. I should mention, if you haven't noticed, folks, Pete and his dad Tex along with us again today. They don't live too far from here, about an hour drive. But look at this rod, man, I'll tell you. Yeah. And Jim, I, I, I want to reiterate, this four pounder, this light line is crucial. Yep. Because these fish are, they notice the thicker line, yep. huh? Yep, they do. Now let's not miss this one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look at that fight. Look at that fight.
Oh. oh, look at the size of this guy. Look at, there we go, another beautiful fish. Look at that one, Tex. Oh my gosh. Tex, come on down here, buddy. Look at the size of that smallmouth bass. Jim, this is just unbelievable, buddy. And you know, we're in the middle of January now. We got some time left for guys to come up and do oh, this yeah. with you? Yep, till the, the regular inland season closes is the same time the bass season will close up here on Schwamigan Bay. Oh, is that gorgeous? You got a little more. There you go, Tex. There we go. 19. 19. Hey, 19. 25, dude. I'll tell you what. Tex, I'm glad to have him along. I yeah. Know. Wonderful well, job, though, buddy. I mean, a, this is, that's a four and a half pound fish. Just exciting. Think? Yeah. And I'll tell you, that, is that a male? Because the females would have eggs now, yep. wouldn't they? Yep. And, uh, but even if they don't have eggs in them, they're still this big. Oh, just gorgeous. Hey, Jim, I'll tell you what. You've, this has been a treat so far today, buddy. All right. Another, there, another release. Another release. There we go. Share. Look at her go. We are fishing to Glamagon Bay in Ashland, Wisconsin. A six hour drive from Milwaukee, six and a half hours from Chicago, and four hours from Minneapolis. Oh, Petey, Petey, Petey. All right. Hey, hey, hey. I got him up here. I'll tell you what, buddy. I can't get, I'm going to have to, I, you know, not a small, that's a small one. Look at the size of this fish. I saw that big one my dad just got. Oh, that's a beauty, man. Yeah, hey, I'll tell you, you know, take a look at this right. fish, folks. That's a nice little solid 15, 14 incher. Hey, but Pete, you and I talked on the phone. I know you've known Jim for a while. This is a real unique deal, isn't it? It really is. I mean, you really don't hear about people getting small malts in the winter. I mean, it, and of course, they're big, fat fish. Here. Yeah. Yeah, that is absolutely cool. But you know, Pete said before, you know, and I, and I said it on the last fish. It is a spoon deal right now, Jimmy. Yep, no doubt. Yep. And I don't know if that's what they're feeding on is small minnows or whatever. Yeah, every day it changes. I mean, you know, the last time we were out here before you came, it was all on jigs. And today, it's all yeah. spoons. So I wish I could fish, man. Well, I'll yeah. tell you what. No, don't touch me. If I do, if I no, I'm just teasing you. If I, I do a jig, this. I'd have to have an assistant reeler, though. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Would you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Maybe I will try. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, folks, it's becoming very, very clear that spoons are the deal. And I hate to repeat myself, but I mean, it's just amazing. And that means the fish are a little more active when they're going yeah. after the spoons, I think. Yeah. Very much so. Oh, this is cool, man. How close are we here? There we are. There we are. There we are. Let them run. Let them run. That's what we talked about before, folks. When we lost one, they'll make that last ditch run. There's another. Hey, I'll tell you what, is that a beautiful fish? And you know, we theoretically, we could have 10 on the ice right now, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, on the, yeah, right. But I mean, that's pretty outstanding. And I'll tell you what, you know, every week we give away our Liney's flavor of the month. Today we got Liney's creamy dark, and it's hard for me to carry it, but uh, I'm going to give that to Dave, not only because Dave caught this bass today, but he helped me get dressed this morning. I did. He's a paramedic up here in the Ashland area, and I'm glad you were with me yesterday, buddy. You helped me out a lot. But you'll love this, Liney's Creamy Dark, great tasting beer, nice and smooth. You'll love it, buddy. And that's for you for helping me out and for catching another beautiful small hop. Thanks a lot, John. Oh, is that a nice fish, huh, Jim? Yep. Just wow. another average fish for Schwamigan Bay. Oh, okay. oh, I'll tell you what, folks, this is some fast fishing here. And look at this. I, who's this guy we brought along here, Jim? Who's killing him, man? Oh, he's, oh, look at this thing go, folks. Oh, this is a nice one. I use, I use my... Let oh. him run, let him run. I use, I use such good reels that I don't need bass. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, I fool around when you're doing this trophy fishing. Well, well. This, folks, is a real nice fish. <laughs> this is a real nice don't fish. Don't jinx me, Johnny. Oh, I'm not, buddy. <laughs> Was that on a death rater or what? <laughs> no. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Oh, is that a gorgeous fish. Look at that, buddy. Hold him up real oh, nice. Oh, don't move your rod. Okay. okay. <laughs> Hold him up real nice. Look at that. That's a nice I, fish. What are you doing differently over here? I'm just, just thinking about fishing. That's yeah? all I'm doing. Oh, I'll tell you what, though. You want to see something, how catch and release works, John? Yeah, let's take a look at this. So we can zoom in here and fish. take a look at this. Oh. Right on the head here. That oh, fish yeah, has been right caught there. before, yeah. huh? So, I mean, and catch still and release healthy. does work. So, uh, that's, I mean... That's all of a four, four and a half pound fish, and it's just yeah. unbelievable. You can't catch smallmouth through the ice, can you? I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. I mean, what an amazing day and a half of fishing, you oh, know? Isn't that great? Isn't that gorgeous? What a beautiful fish. And I'll tell you, when they hit, is it a clunk? It's a, oh, they, they're tapping real light on the line, real light on the line, and then you just got to just watch and just give it a quick jerk, and away you go. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, when I want to get everybody together on the ice, I pull out some Johnsonville heat and serve brats, 
And the wounded guy is doing the cooking today, huh guys? I'll tell you what though, these heat and serves are fabulous. You want to make a quick lunch. And you can do them in the microwave at home for 30 seconds and it tastes like a freshly grilled rot. Or I like to put them on the grill here for about 10 minutes and we are ready to eat. And I'll tell you what folks, these look really awesome. The Johnsonville Heat and Serve Brats. And our taste tester today is Dave, my paramedic who saved me from the depths of doldrums this morning by dressing me, buddy. Now this is a this, this is a Johnsonville Heat and Serve. Now let's do, come on, it's a half hour show, dude. All right. <laughs> now, all right. Now how good is that? <laughs> well, it's really good. Oh, yeah. No, those Excellent, are great. John. Johnsonville Heat and Serves, folks. Put on the grill, 10 minutes on the ice, and you're good to go. Come on, everybody, let's eat. When it comes to fishing, no name is more trusted by more people than Tracker. Presenting the 2006 Tracker Pro Team Series with features like the all-welded Revolution hull with the exclusive smooth ride guarantee and lots of storage space to bring everything you need for fishing. All this for only $99.95. No wonder Tracker is the world's number one selling fishing boat. Folks, for over 20 years, I've relied on Jiffy Ice Drills for quality and speed, and so have the pros I fish with. Running Wisconsin's largest ice guiding service, I can't afford breakdown. Jiffy, the toughest ice drill ever built. Jiffy's new manufacturing process is so good, the blades last twice as long. I drill over 50 holes a day, so I know the best. Jiffy is the smoothest, fastest cutting ice drill ever designed. Jiffy, the only company to offer a three-year warranty on STX blades. For over 50 years, we put America on ice. Technology so advanced, it makes the competition obsolete. Markham Technologies, quality products for the serious outdoor enthusiast. Oh, and after lunch fish, Petey made a all right, buddy. I really, you know, I really am sad I can't jig today. I mean, this is uh, a blast, isn't it? You got a jig and I'll reel for you. All right, buddy, if I get one, yeah. <laughs> but isn't it cool to see them come up off the bottom on the locator? That one was really neat on the Markham. I mean, I was I was watching them, I teased them for a while, and then all of a sudden, I didn't even feel a strike. I just saw the rod tip go a little bit. You know, it was just like he must have came up and went, whoa. Whoa, whoa, cool. Is it a decent fish? I don't know, I've been fighting them for a little while here. Jim, I'll tell you what, we haven't seen a small one, you know, I mean, yeah. these all have been real nice fish. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is a nice bass, oh, another wow. nice one. Real nice. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, Not the biggest <laughs> one in the world, but Not again, her. you know, I'll tell you what, oh, Jim. Hey. No, I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it, yeah, leave me alone, it is a nice fish. But hey, buddy, you know, you and I have been talking recently about the world record musky deal that's been going on with Worma and... Uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, folks, all we want is musky fishermen to have a realistic world record to shoot for. And there's been a lot of articles lately and discussions, and what's happening? What's the latest? Well, the latest is, is that after a year and a half of putting a report together, which was delivered to the Hall of Fame on the 20th of October, the Hall of Fame had a uh, private invite-only press conference yesterday where they announced that they were upholding the spray record. A private was, press conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were, you know, there, only certain people were invited. Uh, one group that was invited, kind of interestingly, you know, Esox Anger Magazine is right in Hayward. We're about a minute away. We weren't invited, you know. Wow. Apparently because of our, our stance that we didn't really believe believe the spray record. So what is the current situation? The current situation is, is right now they denied the report of the WRMA. John Detloff has basically taken over the Hall of Fame. He kind of came up with his own little write-up that described what was wrong with the WRMA's report. And for now, locally, they've, they've voted that uh, the spray fish stands. The 69-pound whatever ounce yep. fish, right. But so what do we do next now? Well, I, you know, personally, I think the thing to do is, is that I, I want to ask the folks at uh, Muskie Hunter Magazine, who uh, I used to write for before all this stuff started, and frankly, they, uh, they call themselves the uh, North American Authority on, on muskies. 
And I'd like to see any of them or really basically find anybody in North America that actually believes these records. Nobody because does. That's the no, no, I could I, I literally put out that challenge. You should be able to have, if it's going to be a legitimate record, you should be able to find a half a dozen people in North America that musky fish that believe in it. I don't think that can happen. I well, don't think they're going to find one except maybe staff member Detloff, uh, who they've been protecting on this whole deal. Uh, and realistically, I mean, that's what we're down to. You know, nobody looking at these photos, knowing the stories, believes it. And I don't think any recognized muskie angler anywhere in North America will say that they believe it. And uh, there's a problem with that. I agree with you, buddy. Oh, there's no rest for the wicked here. Texas, whoa! <laughs> All right, hey, I'll tell you what, Jeff, is it always this fast? <laughs> At times. Oh, there he is. Another nice one, another nice one. Oh, look at that. What a save there. What a save by the big. What a grab. Now, so you just one in my finger. No, I did not do Well, we got a paramedic here to help yeah. you out. No, but seriously, so you just kind of stumbled it, and then you kind of researched it and developed it and figured yep. it out, huh? Yeah. It, uh, I kept on seeing these fish that would rise up from the bottom, yeah. drop back down rise up from the bottom and uh, put my underwater camera down there and it was like, oh my God. That There's many small out there. Schools of them. Hey folks, the Mills Fleet Farm, John Gillespie's Waters and Woods 2006 fishing contest is underway. To enter is simple, just snap a picture of your trophy catch and stop in at your favorite Mills Fleet Farm store to pick up an entry blank. We also have hunting and fishing licenses. Mills Fleet Farm supports catch and release and keeping our water safe and clean. Mills Fleet Farm, your fishing gear headquarters. Jim Hudson Ice Guides on Chaglamagon Bay on a daily basis. For more information, give Jim a call. That phone number is 715-779-5833. 779-5833. All right, Petey, Petey, Petey. The old Gillespie is going to have to hang it up here in a minute, buddy. I'm getting cold. Oh, there, there we go, there we go, there we go. Smalley, Smalley. There we go. Nice little Smalley, buddy. But seriously, you know, we must have iced probably 15 fish in the last day, and the folks can come up and fish when you expect to do that, huh? Exactly. Well, hey, man, give me five. That was a good time. Really enjoyed it, all right? All right. Hey, thanks, everybody. I'm kind of hurting a little bit, so we're okay. going to head in, all right? <laughs> and, folks, that is our show for today. Please join us next week. I don't know we're going to fish you, but we'll find a place somewhere. Until then, I'm John Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying Wisconsin's Waters and Woods. home.